friends, it's Kat from Meow Meow Kapow. I've mentioned before that I love setting up nude palettes, especially if they can be used as travel palettes. This is something I like to call a studio travel palette because it's small enough and durable enough that it can be thrown into my bag without worrying, but also has enough variety of colors to be used as a studio palette if I so choose. This particular setup was made using the Holbein Watercolors 24 set, and any of the materials used in the video will be linked down in the doobly-doo. Most of my palettes involve a lot of extra steps that take a lot of time and effort up front, but make it so that using the palette later is overall easier. The first time-consuming but frankly necessary step I did for this palette is make small color swatches of each paint. Anyone who's ever worked with tube watercolors before can tell you that there's usually a pretty big difference between the way the color looks when used and how it looks when dried in a pan or even when it's straight out of the tube. Making swatches of every color will help you better familiarize yourself with your paints and give you a really good reference point. After I've seen all the color swatches and confirmed they're in an order I like, then it's time to make masking tape labels for all the pans and also cut up magnets for the bottom of each one. I almost always use metal tins for my palettes, so the magnets are a godsend, especially if you like to move around your color sometimes. Always label your pans. I usually note the manufacturer as well as whatever they call their color. All of my little labors here say HWC for Holbein watercolors and then the name of the color. Why label the pans? For the same reason we make the color swatches, to help better keep track of each color. True story, I was once setting up a large palette of core watercolors and while the paints were still drying, I knocked over the entire container. All of my paints were strewn across the floor, and if I hadn't labeled them, I'd never know which color was which. Man, also, that was a disaster to have to clean up. Once all your pans are labeled and have their magnets attached, put them into your tin in the order you want them, and fill each pan with paint. I sometimes just fill the pans and leave them in a separate container to dry before placing them in the tin, but it just makes sense to keep them in this compact space. The tin I'm using, by the way, is a metal gift card container from Michaels, but I've linked something similar down below. Also, don't make the mistake that I always end up doing. Label and magnet your pans before adding the paint. Otherwise, you're going to get paint all over your fingers while you're trying to label. And if you forget that, at least wait until after the paint is dry to do it, if you can. Ooh, pretty. Next up, let's go back to our swatches. I make enough palettes that it became easier for me to just buy a half inch square punch for this, but I used to make my swatches by just tracing around a half pan and cutting it out. Either way works. You may be wondering why we're bothering cutting out the swatches rather than just making one single reference sheet. And that's because I like to be able to move around my paints whenever I need to, which also means I need to be able to move around my swatches whenever I need to. Just like we did in the travel palette I made out of a dollar store eyeshadow thing, we are going to use clear packing tape to laminate everything and make it waterproof. For each row of swatches, I laid them down on a piece of packing tape and then folded that in half. Once they were all taped up, I used a bone folder to seal them in a little bit better. 
If you don't have a bone folder, then it's totally okay to use a metal spoon instead. It's just not quite as easy to maneuver and really get up against the swatches, but it definitely gets the job done. Now, we need to display these swatches in our tin somehow, so I traced the lid of the palette on a piece of sturdy but inexpensive paper, cut it down until I was sure that it was easily fit inside the lid, and then laminated it with tape. Start cutting the extra laminate away from our little color swatches, but don't do more than a couple at a time if you're worried about accidentally knocking them on the floor and losing your order. We're going to use glue dots to stick them to the swatch card so we can remove them easily if we ever need to. Take a cut swatch, place it on the glue dot, and then take the swatch with the glue dot and put it back on the card where it belongs. Cut, stick, and repeat until all your colors are where they need to be. My preferred method of decoration for palettes is washi tape, but now you get to see a bit more in-depth on how I finish something like this. After you've chosen the pattern of your tapes, cut pieces that are long enough to fully cover the front. It's okay if they're too long because we'll clean it up afterwards. Carefully use an X-Acto knife and or scissors to clean up the edges. The last strip of washi tape we use will go around the outside edge, so it doesn't need to be super clean, but at least don't let there be any long amounts of tape hanging off the edge. To keep the design secure, since washi tape sometimes likes to come up a bit, I use some craft glue to seal it all together. You can use Elmer's glue, Mod Podge, or basically any kind of PVA to do this step. I also use my fingers to spread it out, since they're usually pretty easy to find. After the glue is dry, I take one more laminating step. The glues I use are water soluble, which means that if I happen to have a wet paper towel from a painting session and leave it near or on the palette, they will become best friends and basically not be able to be separated. By coating the dried glue with some clear nail polish, this is pretty well combated. The nail polish is fairly durable, but more importantly, waterproof. One last trick. Most travel palettes have a thumb ring on the bottom of them to help you hold onto the palette a bit easier. To imitate this, I've been using cell phone finger ring. You can buy these at Five Below sometimes, but they also sell them on Amazon in a multi-pack if you're a pellet person like me. Also, binder clips are apparently one of the most useful things in the universe, so most of my pellets have at least two of them inside. This one has four so that we can use two to link the lid to the body and use it as a mixing tray, and two more to hold up the swatch card for easy display. I elected not to spray the inside of this palette with white enamel spray paint or make separated mixing wells with hot glue like I often do, but that was honestly just because this overall took about three days to construct and I didn't want to wait another day for the spray paint to dry. Plus, I usually swatch out my mixes on a separate piece of paper before painting, so a white background wouldn't make a difference for me. If it helps you though, go for it. I hope you learned some new tricks from this. What are some other ideas I should experiment with for my next palette? I'd absolutely love to hear your tips because I am always looking for new techniques and palette builds. Thank you so much for hanging out and literally watching paint dry with me. Thrilling, isn't it? If it helped you at all, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Until I see you next time, I wish you nothing but peace, love, and a pretty, pretty princess. Bye!